Brian the Birdman here. This is the 2017 field season. This is my sixth point of the morning. And I gotta get a hustle on it because we're already about 7.30 in the morning here. ninth today and I spent the whole day basically being a cartographer just figuring out uh, where on earth all my bird surveys are and I'm doing the hardest thing in the field season which is leaving home. Good job Zach. I'm driving out to Manaqua tonight and I'll be getting there in the dark and I will not be setting up camp. I will be immediately beginning to conduct a, a whippoorwill survey route. I'm doing my roadside WSO surveys, which are drive surveys, but this road, just a little bit pain scratchy, so I'm walking, getting some exercise. Whipper wheel surveys finished at 2 a.m. I slept in until 5.30 this morning, just so I wouldn't be totally bonkers. And it's official, I'm already getting tougher. No seams uh, and mosquitoes are really amazing right now. Yeah, I'm feeling it, it's, uh, it's good. I'm in the toughening process right now, holy. I'm in the uh, Nibish Lake area, and I've got a black throated blue warbler. Huh, point number four. Thank you. 
for uh, all my professed love of mosquitoes and all places wild. These little noceums are really something. Chest inside a warbler. Ferocious. Almost the point of hindering com uh, <laughs> concentration. Um, really feeling the fire. So once my immune system gets used to these little buggers, um, I'll be happy, but I think I'm going to be pretty ugly for a few days. cute and everything. I <laughs> felt kind of bad doing the count here, but in 10 minutes or so I'll be gone and he'll be on with his life. Some swamp conifer. In swamp conifer, the yellow rumped warblers often do a different song. It's really kind of crazy cool how that works. And so do the black burning warblers. They have a more subdued song that's reminiscent of a Cape May warbler. I almost wonder if it's because they're competing with those guys right there, the golden crown kinglets. So this is why I love this so much. It's really spectacular the places I get to see and the places that this little magical tool right here tells me I have to go. Whatever it is, it's got to be 250 meters from the last place. So whatever that happens to be is what I get to see. American conservationist Aldo Leopold said, too much safety seems to yield only danger in the long run. He also said, it must be a poor life that achieves freedom from fear. Some of the greatest ecological catastrophes in recent history have come from the human desire to wipe out mosquitoes. To rid an ecosystem of mosquitoes is to destroy it. Despite disease risks, mosquitoes are valuable. Mosquitoes are food for tropical migrant birds. Further, the aquatic larvae provide abundant food for other aquatic insects and, both directly and indirectly, food for frog and salamander tadpoles, young fish, and maybe even ducklings. When the mosquitoes bite me, my blood boosts their reproductive potential, and they contribute more greatly to the food web. I eat walleye, perch, and bluegill. When I give my blood to the mosquito, I'm just donating back to the ecosystem that feeds me. Yeah, survey point. Number 39. Spectacular. Got purple finch and palm warbler singing already. And, and there might just be a mosquito or two.
Protocol ends at 10 a.m. Had a good brisk start, got in the woods before 5 a.m. Had my first count started at five sharp. Got uh, 11 counts done, start of my 12th, and the rain and the wind came. So the birds are done, and uh, no more data to be collected. I can now spend uh, the rest of my day scouting, but uh, most likely the really cool stuff is all spent for the day. Black or green warbler. Birds have uh, search image for habitat and suitability, and uh, they they look for habitat. You would think anyway at uh, three different levels: at kind of the landscape level, at the stand level, and then at microhabitat level. And if you've got a significant stand of suitable habitat, if it's got the, the right characteristics of landform and water and soil, and the types of vegetation that are supported by that match up, birds then can seek the microhabitat components. And those microhabitat components could be things like these uh, sedge tussocks here, or the hummocks of sphagnum moss, or the top crowns of the black spruce. Golden crown kinglets really like those. Palm warblers and Nashville warblers and Lincoln sparrows like this sort of hummocky thicket stuff for close to the ground or ground nesting. So all these things uh, come into play. And what I do is I listen. I listen to the sounds of the birds that are responding to the habitat components. And so what a point count is really is habitat information what habitat components are available, how have the birds responded to it. Birdsong can tell you a lot about what's working and bird songs can tell you about the overall community ecosystem structure. Animals relate to the physical structures of forest ecosystems every bit as much as they relate to the diverse attributes provided by the life cycles of different species. Trees and shrubs, both dead and alive, provide valuable physical structure. Look at all of the different layers in this ecosystem cross-section. There's a canopy, subcanopy, and shrub layer, and the forest interfacing with the water. At the margin, both emergent and submergent vegetation, the quality of the water. How can we measure all of this? Well, studying birds is a great way to gain valuable insight into how an ecosystem is working. Bird surveys provide an effective and inexpensive way to gain huge amounts of valuable ecosystem information. The assemblage of different bird species in a location provides a vivid picture of available habitats. Birds are very abundant in most environments, and bird communities respond quickly to environmental changes. The assemblages of different bird species will actually change in response to important habitat changes. And many of these changes are already understood by biologists. Thus, bird communities can be diagnostic of change. Because birds sing, call, and display, they are detectable and easily studied with minimal equipment. With complex songs and vibrant colors advertising their lives, we can see, hear, and experience the health of an ecosystem in a way that is easy to appreciate and quantify. Declines in bird abundance can signal declines in other ecosystem components, 
and changes in bird community structure may point to an important habitat change. The great American ornithologist Roger Torrey Peterson said it best when he said, We have no choice. We must save the birds. For in saving the birds, we save ourselves.